I'm Forrest Crumble, the interim transitional pastor at St. Paul United Church of Christ in Pekin, Illinois. We are glad that you're able to worship with us, and we ask that uh, we hope and pray that you will be spiritually fed in our time together. Our call to worship this morning comes from the 60th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, it is you who brought nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Till the world with your glory and show yourself to the nations. Through Jesus Christ, who is true light and the bright morning star, we lift up our voices and our spirits to worship you. In Christ's name, we very humbly pray, amen. lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke from the second chapter beginning at the 22nd verse. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, Lord, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to them, his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phaeol, of the tribe of Asher. She was great in age, having lived with her husband seven years, after, and after her marriage, a widow for 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When all of this was finished and everything required by the law completed, Mary and Joseph returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and favor of God was upon to him. May God add understanding to the reading of that word. Amen. In the bleak midwinter, 
join me once again in the spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable into your sight, O Lord, and may those things said today that are true be engraved upon every heart, and anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. In your name we very humbly pray. Amen. On January 3rd, Robert Redfield, the director of the Centers for Disease Control, spoke with George Fu Go, the director of the Chinese Center of Disease Control, about the rumors concerning an unexplained respiratory ailment that was sweeping the city of Wuhan, China. Dating back to the presidency of George W. Bush, the Centers of Disease Control in Atlanta had been working on what to do in case of a widespread respiratory illness an outbreak similar to what occurred in 1918 with the Spanish flu. Mr. Goh, when pressed, assured Mr. Redfield that, that there was no evidence of any human-to-human -human transmission of this mysterious respiratory illness. And, and yet, the rumors persisted. It seems that there were family clusters being reported. Redmond offered to send representatives from the CDC in the United States to investigate, but Mr. Goh said that, that he was not authorized to accept such accept assistance. Not to be deterred, Mr. Redfield made a formal request to the Chinese government, and he had, he had assembled two dozen experts in the field of infectious disease ready 
to go to China at a moment's notice. But an invitation from their government never came. A few days later, in another conversation with Redfield, Mr. Goh started to cry. I think that we're too late, he said. The mysterious illness that had been circulating in China since at least November of 2019 had now become rampant. Redfield had no way of knowing that the virus had al was already present in California and Oregon and Washington and would soon be in Massachusetts, Wisconsin, Iowa, Connecticut, Michigan, and Rhode Island. Thus, the beginning of COVID-19. 2020 has been a very trying year for all of us, and we are tired, we're fatigued, and some of us are even angry. We want things to go back to normal, to the way things, the way they were. We are an impatient people. We do not like waiting for anything, especially at a time like this. We've grown accustomed, or is it spoiled, to the convenience of microwave ovens that cook our meals in seconds and certainly no more than a few minutes. And we like express lanes. If express lanes are not fast enough for us, we can use self-checkout lanes. Now, of course, these things have their drawbacks. For example, some people cannot count to 12 and seem to abuse the express lane, and others, the self-check, really doesn't help the employment figures. But we are an impatient people and we expect instant gratification. We simply do not like to wait. So I invite you to put yourself in the place of the two main characters of today's gospel lesson, Simeon and Anna. Simeon was righteous and devout, we are told, touched by the Holy Spirit of God, the true spirit of wisdom, the Sophia, God promised Simeon through a dream or a premonition or a gut feeling that he would not taste death, that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Christ or the Messiah. And he did in that little child born of Mary and Joseph. When they entered the temple, Simeon took the babe in his own arms and he was moved to sing a song that we call the Song of Simeon. God, you can now release your servant, release me in peace as you promised. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation. It's now out in the open for everyone to see, God revealing light to the non-Jewish nations and of glory to your people Israel. And then there was Anna, the other character in the story. We know that unlike Simeon, we know that she was very, very old. She had been married for seven years and a widow for another 84 years. And she waited day and night for this very moment. She waited a whole lifetime, it seems. Seeing Mary and Joseph's child, she knew that she was seeing with her own eyes the redemption of Jerusalem. Long before this day, the prophet in Isaiah wrote these words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned jesus is that light and in what we commonly call the sermon on the mount in matthew's gospel we have been charged by jesus to also be that light those who take jesus seriously he said, are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. He was not speaking to individuals, but to a community. He continued, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In that same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Those of us 
who decide to take Jesus seriously are called to be beacons of light in a world that is too filled with darkness and despair. And we who have been baptized are called to live into our baptism by reflecting the light of God's love made visible in Jesus Christ. For so many of us, 2020 has been a year of waiting. Waiting to see friends, waiting to see family members, waiting to hear about unemployment aid, waiting to hear about job opportunities, waiting to hear about loved ones in the hospital. And many of us can hardly wait for this new year. We're ready for 2020 to be over. With the promise of vaccines, we hope that the world will go back to normal, but we really don't know what this normal is going to be like. It has been said that Charles Darwin spoke of survival of the fittest, but a better understanding of what he really meant when he wrote The Origins of the Species is survival of the most adaptable. Humans have survived through the centuries because we are adaptable. We have learned to live in all kinds of environments, from the desert to the Arctic, in the heat and in the cold. This world is in a constant state of flux, and we are too. We know that in this COVID-19 era, that things will never be the same. They will never be what they were nine or 10 months ago, or even a year ago. Loved ones are no longer with us. Each of us has grown older. Social distancing, hand washing, and maybe even masks will become a part of our everyday lives, at least seasonally, if not continually. We also know in our heart of hearts that some restaurants will not reopen. Some businesses will be forever closed and some churches will find themselves in the same trajectory. Those who survive will need to learn how to be adaptable to this new reality, a reality nevertheless. Yes, we are a busy and an impatient people. We hate to be kept waiting. We want instant gratification. We know what we want and we want it now. And yet the ancient words of the psalmist can be heard if we listen carefully enough to the whisper on the winds and pay attention to the pulse of our own hearts. The psalmist sang, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart Take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. In God's time zone, a day is like a thousand years. When our hopes and dreams don't come true in a day, we need to keep in mind that God is still at work, still wrapping the package, if you will, still preparing the gift to fit our needs and preparing us to accept the gift. We need to pray, not just for health and strength and for others, but we also need to pray for the gift and for the patience to wait for God's unveiling of that gift. May God richly bless you in this new year. May you be watching and hoping for that gift. To God be the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. I have a short postscript for you. As a transitional and interim pastor, my main role is to help prepare you for your next pastor.
And in the coming weeks, I will share with you a sermon series that is based on the Old Testament book of Exodus. In this interim transitional time, as the members and friends of St. Paul's United Church of Christ begin to write a new chapter in their history together, we will explore the lessons that we can glean from the story of God's people as they journeyed from slavery in Egypt to a land flowing with milk and honey. I hope that you will join us in this journey. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Our Lord God, you surround us with your warm embrace of love. And in your love, you teach us how to love others. In your spirit, we ask for guidance. And you remind us always of your compassion for all humankind. Help us keep our eyes and our lives focused on the perfect gift of Jesus Christ. Enable us to follow his teachings above our own way and will. Help us also, loving God, to work for growth in your kingdom. Sometimes it is difficult to speak a word of hope and to help those in need. But with the encouragement of your spirit, may we be faithful builders of your eternal kingdom. Our Lord God, we also pray for those who could not be with us today and ask at the time that this spirit of worship might also touch their hearts and their lives. Help us be a community of faith, even though we are separated one from another, but through the miracle of virtual worship, we can still be faithful disciples, helping, caring, praying for one another. We pray for all the broken places in this world, for those who sit helplessly by bedsides waiting for their loved ones to complete this part of life's journey, for those who are filled with disappointment and sadness. Lord God, we also offer prayers of thanksgiving for the tender mercies that you have poured into our lives. Answer all of our various and sundry prayers, even those prayers that we cannot find the words to express. Answer them according to your will, but more importantly, Lord, make us perceptive to your will as we go about the living of our lives. And separately, but together, we pray as Jesus first taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. While shepherds kept their watching for silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there came a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ was born the shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our savior's birth Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation 
that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. I charge each and every one of you to go out into this world and return no one evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but learn how to love and forgive one another as freely as God in Christ has loved and forgiven each and every one of us. And may the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth, may these three things abide in your heart so that you may produce the fruit of God's kingdom every day of your life. Amen.